Hi, I'm Van and welcome to Overland Lab. Today I want to talk to you about 12 volt air compressor setups. Now, whether you're running a daily driver, a multi-purpose off-road adventure truck, or heavy duty dedicated off-roader, having a good onboard air system allows you to be able to reinflate your tires pretty much anywhere and any time, which can be incredibly convenient, especially if you don't have regular access to a heavy duty air compressor like a shop compressor. Now, in an off-road environment, having an air compressor is especially important because you're much more likely to encounter a puncture event where you might have to repair a tire and then subsequently reinflate. And also, as I mentioned in my tire deflator video, deflating tires allows you better off-road traction and stability, but ultimately you want to reinflate them before getting back on the highway and heading home so that you can maximize fuel economy and preserve the life of the tires. Now, generally, portable 12-volt air compressor systems come in two varieties. Uh, highly portable standalone compressor systems, which are going to be a little more portable, generally more affordable, and are really only good for just reinflating tires, and then complete onboard air systems that include a compressor, uh, some sort of a regulator system, as well as a complete tank and set of fittings. If you're doing a heavy duty off roader, planning on reinflating very large tires, or if you're running air tools or air lockers, some variety of a mounted, integrated onboard system is probably more convenient. But I kind of settled on a simple, portable, um, <clears throat> standalone system because they're generally more affordable and I really wasn't planning on running air lockers or, or air tools. My entire tool system for this truck is a set of uh, hand tools and I'm eventually going to do, I think, an electronic locker when the time comes. After doing some research, I settled on this unit. The Masterflow MF1050. It's a small, standalone, 12-volt air compressor, and after doing a little bit of research, um, it's ultimately made by a company, Q Industries, that I believe does a lot of rebranding. So if you see other air compressors that look similar to this one, chances are they're coming out of the same factory. It's a very solid little unit. Um, it's quick. It says it can reinflate a truck tire in about two minutes, and I found that to be accurate. It does run a little faster if the vehicle is running, and especially as big a current draw as it is, that's probably a good idea to have the vehicle running. But I was able to inflate my uh, 35 inch, or I should say, uh, 285 7017s or 33 inch tall tires from 15 back up to 35 in just under two minutes uh, with the truck running, and again, a little slower with the truck off. The nice thing about it is it's an easy unit to disassemble and repair, so you can get a little more longevity out of the unit. If you do have issues, it's easy to fix. Uh, it says it has about a 20 minute run time. I'm not sure what that works out to in a duty cycle, but if you can reinflate a big tire in about two or three minutes, I don't see a lot of scenarios where you would be running it for a full 20 minutes. Now, there are some disadvantages to this unit, unfortunately. The, it is an, an all-in-one system. It's got basically everything you need right out of the box to run this system. But the bag that it comes with is, you know, it's a little wimpy. It's kind of thin. Some of the seams are already coming apart. The gauge that it comes with is kind of inaccurate, especially when the unit's running. You kind of have to turn the unit off to see where it's at. I didn't find it to be particularly reliable. And my biggest complaint about the unit was the wiring harness that it came with is kind of thin gauge and oddly enough the fuse is closer to the unit than to the battery clamps. You just clamp these onto the battery and run the unit from that. And if this is closer to the unit than it is to the source of the power, that means the length of wire from here to the plug is unfused and thus kind of unsafe, especially if there is a short, the wire gets clipped or, tri or uh, uh, punctured, and then you can have a short and a small electrical fire, which no one really wants. The other problem that I found is it comes with a small coiled hose, which is pretty convenient. But on a long wheelbase vehicle like my F-150, I just didn't quite have the reach that I really needed to be able to inflate all four tires, especially if it was just hooked to the battery. So after doing some research online, I decided to do a little bit of tinkering and upgrade to an ammo can style air compressor. In this portion of the video, I want to walk you through some of the upgrades that I've made to this unit, as well as some of my reasoning behind it. I first decided to put this uh, air compressor in a 50 cal ammo can after the obvious failing of the small transport bag that the unit comes with. I also wanted something that'd be a little more heavy duty than that's a simple soft bag, as well as something a little more weather tight. The other nice thing about a 50 cal ammo can is they fit very nicely in a decked drawer, which is where this unit's most likely going to spend the majority of its life. Now, if you're not running a drawer system and you're just running a truck bed, an ammo can like this can be easily locked down and stored, as well as um, in the elements, if you're not running a topper, 
because the can is completely gasketed. Upon opening the can, you can see that all the components necessary for its operation are sealed within the can, and the can is completely gasketed, so everything in there is protected from the elements. With the air compressor removed from the 50 caliber ammo can, you can see some of the modifications that I had to make to the unit in order to accommodate the small dimensions of the 50 caliber ammo can. Right off the bat, I had to remove the carrying handle for the air compressor in order to accommodate the clearance of the lid. I also had to remove the front tire pressure gauge that was originally here and replace it with a standard quarter inch NPT air hose fitting. You do have to drill out the hole a little bit larger and tap it for the new air hose fitting. All the air hose fittings I used are Milton. I find them to be really high quality and hold up really, really well. Um, and the loss of the uh, tire pressure gauge on the air compressor, which I found to be inaccurate anyway, can be easily compensated for by the addition of a good high quality tire pressure gauge in your kit. You should probably have one of these anyway. In addition to relocating the air hose fitting up front, I also had to relocate the intake, uh, intake filter to the side of the unit. This also involved drilling and tapping. In addition to that, there's now two holes in the head of the air compressor that I just plugged with a quarter inch NPT countersunk plugs in order to keep the unit sealed and airtight. The wiring harness also received a substantial upgrade. I opened the unit and removed the very badly wired relay on the inside and replaced it with something heavier duty from an auto parts store. The stock wiring harness was replaced with a homemade 10AWG harness that was completely loomed and the ends were capped with a standard Anderson connector, which I purchased from uh, a website that I'll put down in, the, down in the comments in case you want to order your own. They're pretty affordable and easy to install. I'll put a link to a video that I used as a reference for how to install them. I chose to solder the ends instead of crimp them, mainly because I didn't have the crimping tools and I feel the soldering is a little bit better anyway. Now, for my vehicle, I installed an Anderson plug at both the front and the rear of the truck, and then I installed the ends into the blue C fuse blocks that I had there anyway. In order to keep the unit as versatile as humanly possible, I also made this wiring harness. At this end is a standard Anderson connector. I also have a small 30 amp fuse in line, and then I also purchased some 50 amp rated DECA battery clamps in case I need to use this in a vehicle that isn't wired up with these Anderson plugs. The nice thing about these Anderson plugs is they can handle a lot higher current than a standard than a standard weather pack connector, as well as they cannot be installed incorrectly. The way the two units interface, you can only ever plug them together, positive to positive, negative to negative, and they lock very securely and cannot be easily unplugged. Now the standard coiled air hose this unit comes with is probably good enough for most applications. On one end you have a standard quick disconnect fitting, and on the other you have an end that can be threaded onto the tire valve stem so it remains intact while the unit is running and reinflating the tire. The downside of this unit is it's not going to fit into the ammo can. I really wanted the unit to be an all-in-one, so I kind of had to go back to the drawing board with this. In order to accomplish that, I created my own quick disconnect whip. I used a three-foot Goodyear whip, which is guaranteed to remain flexible at low temperatures. As harsh as the winters get out here in the Midwest, that can be a pretty valuable asset, especially as stiff as some of these hoses can get when they're cold. One end is fitted with a standard Milton quick disconnect, and on the other end is a quick disconnect tire chuck so that I can, don't have to thread it on each and every time so that I can check the tire pressure. This, coupled with a good tire pressure gauge, makes for a complete system and it's I found to be very, very handy. One innocuous but surprisingly important modification that I had to make to this ammo can is this small hook that you see here. This hook is attached by a short length of paracord to a stainless steel fender washer on the back of the latch to the can. This hook exists so that the ammo can can be carried with the lid partially open and the air hose and wiring harness protruding so that it can be transported without completely opening the unit. I found this to be important in case the unit was ever used in rainy or drizzly conditions so that the ammo can can remain cracked with fresh air coming in, but no water or sand or detris or anything else getting into the ammo can to keep the unit clean and protected.
Now, whether you go the heavy duty ammo can route like I did, or if you just use the unit stock out of the box, I think the Masterflow MF1050 is gonna be a really solid choice for a lot of you guys out there. It's a pretty solid air compressor. It runs pretty quick and quietly, and it's gonna, it's a really high value piece of hardware. Last time I checked, these guys were going for about 70 bucks on Amazon, especially if you have Prime, it shows up in your house in about two days, and it's pretty hard to beat, especially considering that you can disassemble and repair it. It kind of guarantees that you're gonna get as long a service life out of this unit as is humanly possible. Possible. And I think it's ultimately a really good high value option. As always, if you have any questions about this project or anything else on the channel, please feel free to ask them in the comments. If you have not subscribed, please do. Also check out the other website that I tend to put the videos and articles up on, uh, rootsgameandtrail.com. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we look forward to uh, seeing you on the next video. Thanks again.